we were wondering uh, what it was. It may be, it was there a partic particular reason. I mean, could you give a particular reason why you abandoned atheism? Uh, like for me, it was, you know, I would never was an atheist, but I uh, didn't have a relationship with God. And it was the presentation of the gospel. And when I realized who Jesus Christ is, it had such profound impact on me that I believed purely based on the gospel pre presentation. Uh, and I was wondering, we were just wondering what it was that uh, got you to believe. Um, it was a combination of things, but I suppose the most prevalent one would be that other than the fact that Jesus Christ claimed to be the son of God, there's nothing else to disagree with the man on. Pretty much everything he said is true or came true eventually. You can chalk that up and that to human intuition and the intuitive powers of great scholars putting words in a man's mouth, but then you would have to beg the question of why nobody thought to do that before. When it comes to Jesus Christ, the only thing that anybody disagrees with a man about is that he's the son of God. Yeah. The next day. Oh, there he is, Xerxes. Yo, what's up? We're talking about you. I am. Um, astonishing. Yeah. We're talking about your conversion, John Lee and I. No kidding. That's right. Mm. It's fascinating to me. I'm just kind of going over when Matt asked you why be, why you became a Catholic. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and um, the answer seemed to be, well, John Lee didn't even remember what you said. It was like so forgettable. John Lee says, usually when I hear a testimony, I'm moved. I'm moved so much that I say amen. But in your case, John didn't even remember what you said. It was so forgettable. Probably because I never said it in front of John. Just, oh, he's, he said he was there. Just, well, just, I was there, but like I said, Tom, I could have been, I could have stepped away at the part you're talking about because I don't remember it. Uh, usually I would remember at least little bits of it, but I think I might have stepped away. You want me to tell you what I, I'll, t I'll tell you, King Xerxes, what I told John. When you were asked why you converted, you said something like, and I'm going to do my, like, as, I'm going to want to be as faithful as I can, like, by my memory. It was something like, well, you can't disagree with the man. Everything Jesus said was either true or came true. And you have to wonder why someone else didn't say it first. Is that, is that pretty accurate, what you said? I've said something to that effect, but that's not the reason why I converted. I was just talking about, like, general reasons to believe. Oh! I was under the impression he, he was asking you what convinced you and made you become a Catholic. I mean, usually I find, uh, Xerxes, that uh, the kind of people share their personal experience, or religious experience. I don't even understand what he just said. Xerxes, why don't we just, why did you convert? Well, <clears throat> there's a few reasons, but... Um... I mean, I don't really think it matters, honestly. I don't think that uh, 
give you some detailed answers actually going to satiate your curiosity. Well, I mean, nobody's qualifying that it has to be, like, extremely detailed. I mean, something like personal experience of God would probably, like, sufficient in detail. Sure, there you go, then, fine. But is that... Is that it? Uh, Yeah. Why is that not enough? I mean... Are you saying, I mean, I'm skeptical of the way you're answering. It's almost like you're being like sarcastic. Is that true? Well, obviously there's going to be, you know, personal revelation involved. Uh Uh-huh. It's kind of hard to believe in a personal God if you don't believe in a personal relationship with the God, so... Yeah, clearly there was a personal element involved. Seems uh, self-evident. Okay. At the very minimum, that anybody who believes in the existence of a personal God believes that they have a relationship with that God, right? Has experienced that God to some extent. Look, man, I mean, I think probably one of the best reasons to believe in God might be if you had some sort of like really amazing personal experience. I mean, King Xerxes, if, if like, you know, one night God uh, took you by the hand, Jesus took you by the hand and took you on the, you know, a whirlwind tour of, you know, Christmas past, present and future. And like, yeah, dude, that would be pretty, pretty cool. Com- pretty compelling. I mean, but right. well, here's, well- the, the the story of my conversion is a lot less interesting than the story of how everybody found out. How did everybody find out? I was having a private conversation with a friend of mine on here, and unfortunately, the room was not locked. So in the midst of that conversation, several people joined and overheard what I was talking to that friend about. Within a few days, the rumor spread like wild. On fire, and I'm obviously not just going to say no. So people kept asking me in direct messages, and I just said yes. I just confirmed that it was true. But it was never something that I intended to make fully public, at least not yet. Can I ask you why, why not? Well, for the most part, I'm still learning. I'm currently in RCIA. I'm a catechumen. I'm not like in the stage at this point to like sit and argue with people. John, do you remember what I said about hardware mode? Yeah. Um, but Xerxes, I mean, I understand that you're not really, I think what you're describing is like, look, you're learning about Catholicism. You're not currently in a position to like, rigorously defend it in some sort of like debate environment yeah but it sounds like to me he has a reason tom he's just not comfortable in sharing it right now that's what it sounds like to me uh yeah that kind of sounds kind of accurate also yeah but but xerxes i don't know maybe you're misunderstanding because i don't think anybody is actually asking you to defend it right no one's asking not a single person, right? Um, That's the not only, true. The only, the only question really is that we're just wanting to know about the conversion process. Because, like, you can come up with a defense for Catholicism now and that you're studying now, right? But we, the only thing that we're really concerned of is what caused you to change your belief. Why? Because that's the one that actually changed your belief. Why would I be concerned to something that you like read in a book after after you already changed your belief? No, 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 no. Like, why are you concerned with what changed my mind? Oh, um, we have discussions here every day, all day. There's arguments that go back and forth. Um, there's almost no success in actually changing anyone's mind on either side. 
day in, day out. And here comes along Xerxes. And he says, I've changed my mind. And I'm not going to tell you? What do you mean? You, you can't understand why I want to know? Well, I've told plenty of people. I just haven't told any of you. Well, Xerxes, I'm curious, too, because you you know me. Is like I'm actually looking to be convinced. It's like I've said it I've said it a million times. If someone Xerxes gives me an argument that would convince me to be Christian, I would be I would convert back to Roman Catholicism. And if something was convincing to you, I would be willing to want to hear it so I would con to help me convert. I'd be happy to have that conversation with you in private, Corsi. Fair enough. Um, Would you be willing well, to have that conversation with me in private? No. Hmm. Okay. All I'll and, say is, like, uh, like uh, yeah, I wouldn't, I I wouldn't, I wouldn't add know. anything new to the conversation. What's that? I wouldn't add anything new to the conversation. Oh. So, I God mean, you kind of. Himself. God did not reveal himself to me in a way he hasn't revealed himself to billions of others. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I got to be honest with you, man. This type of like caginess. Uh. I think the best explanation is that you're just not really comfortable that you're going to have a a good answer. I think you think that your answer is going to be like laughed at. I don't think any answer is good enough for the non-converts. Like there I have close friends on here who know in detail why like why I converted. Like I've shared with them the experiences leading up to it. And they didn't laugh. They were very sympathetic, empathetic. They related to it. Well, you're Thought saying that they were your close friends, right? Yeah, I don't think you would expect that your close friends laugh at you. Well, I mean, they were friends of mine who even like disagreed with me on things, you know. Um, but you know, I value their opinions and their thoughts on things, and you know, I talked to them about it, and uh, their feedback was all I needed on the matter, really. So, hmm. well, I mean, um, is he ultimately I'm just not interested in playing the game? I don't, I don't care anymore. It's completely uninteresting to me. Playing what game? Like justifying your belief or something like that? Here we go. Bad, 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 a swing. What do you mean? Hmm. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, you don't want to say. That's fine. Um, typically, this is how it goes. That's why I'm so curious, right? Xerxes um, in a hole 10 feet deep. Can't get out because he has big feet. I mean, usually when people say that they have an experience of God, which you seem to kind of like, initially say but now you're kind of like retracting as not really anything that's different than anyone else has so i'm just guessing that it just means that you didn't really have an experience in the way that we thought you meant so i don't know like you realize oh, i was not going to add anything new to the conversation well I mean, yeah. i'm not so sure about that so xerxes um do you think that like your disdain for the left had anything to do with it? No. Do you think Diabolical that... Diabolical evil. What? what? Diabolical evil, bro. I mean, you don't, you don't think that, like, you identify more with, like, um, you know, well-dressed people with, like, haircuts. They're wearing Nautica. And like pleated khakis don't you don't think that like on some level you identify better with those people than like 
lesbians with blue hair and gay men with crop tops and hey. short shorts. Hello? Was that a serious question? Oh, my bad. Object. Yes, that was a hundred percent serious question. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. man. Uh, objection, serious. counselor leading the witness. No, it's a serious question. Yeah, objection, counselor leading the witness. How's it leading the witness? I mean, I gave you two options. There's no leading. Al, well, you're like, do you do you relate more with this stereotype or this stereotype? Uh, neither. Neither. I reject your dichotomy. Leading the witness. <clears throat> I mean, you don't you don't identify more with like straight people that have like natural hair colors than like gay people with like unnatural hair colors, things like that. You don't have any no part of you identifies on one side over the other at all. Like some people who think color? that sex and gender are the same thing. And the other some people that think it's a social con you don't identify with one group over the uh, the other at all. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, obviously, I relate more to the people who are right than the people who are wrong. I mean, that's fine. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you know, you don't have you don't have to be a theist to acknowledge the reality of biological sex. Right? There's plenty of atheists to do that too. Well, I mean, like, right and wrong for you doesn't end there, right? Because, like, even when we're talking about gay versus straight, and I, I know you said you don't identify with either. But, I mean, like, for it, uh, in your worldview, gay is wrong. Straight is right, right? Um, well, yeah, now, but not when I was an atheist. You didn't think, that, you, you didn't have any of those thoughts as an atheist? I don't think there was anything intrinsically immoral about homosexuality. Yeah, but I mean, like, look, I just, I mean, I've talked to you, I've known you for a while, and I think it's pretty obvious. You haven't known me that well. Well, I know you, I know you well enough to know that you pretty much have a disdain for the leftists. Um, I have a disdain for just unrepentant hedonism and malfeasance, but. That comes from the left and the right. Um, I think that I think there is malfeasance, immorality on both sides. But do you think it's equal? Well, I mean, it depends on how far you go. But I would say the Overton window has shifted further to the left, right? So there's more people who fall into the leftist camp that are like reprobate degenerates. Yeah. It just seems like, you know, your existing sort of takes on the leftists is just sort of like come into alignment with like your theological views now. And it's just sort of all Does it together. Though? I mean, yeah, certain people, uh, yeah, the uh, the Catholic Church has been overtaken by the gays, and it's all a bunch of liberal nonsense. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Pope Francis is a communist. You know, yeah, certain people. So if you think if I was uh, politically motivated to convert, that I would have picked Catholicism out of a hat? No. You know, I, have gone to, like, <clears throat> I think there's a lot. Rocks. No, I think there's a lot of reasons why, even today, Catholicism so is... why uh, would I pick... Yeah, the least popular and most notoriously passive form of Christianity. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were talking about this earlier, and there's um, definitely a rise in uh, the popularity of Catholicism. Eager of Alan Gnostic? Based on what? And the idea is that a lot of these people are attracted to... Um, like the ritualistic nature of Catholicism, uh, so okay. the, well, uh, the, the history Eastern of Orthodox it, that. the history of it, not to the same well, degree. Orthodox has that too. Not to the same degree. Um, and, that mean? 
Not to the same degree? Like, yeah, what does that even mean? It means that, <laughs> like, the, the rituals Orthodox and Catholics are... are virtually identical. Like, Catholics and Orthodox, like, they're really... The only really differences between them is their, uh, uh, the theological beliefs on essence energy distinctions, the filioque way, and uh, papal privacy, right? Like when yeah, it comes I'm to, like, like I'm making like currently like, like a comparison to like Protestantism or something like that, right? I mean, Orthodox versus Catholicism, whatever. I mean, you have your personal reasons for that, maybe. But I think yeah, so that it's like it, this is all about the arbitrary speculation. Well, a lot of it is is speculation. I don't think it's arbitrary. I mean, like I'm telling you the reasons, right? Um, and uh, I think that there is an attraction for a lot of people to sort of like the um, formality of it, the structure of it, like, you know, the funny hats and stuff like that. Um, the ritual. I mean, like if, yeah, if I had to make some sort of analogy, hat. it's like if, if you, what would, what's going to be more appealing, uh, like sort of um, these people like in three piece suits or like these like business casual Protestants. Right. And you can see how there's a type of person who's going to be like, I want to go with the Catholics. Right. What are you talking about? I think it's clear. I get it. I get like, it. Yeah. But I don't. People in three piece suits. Like, are you talking about like the conservative pundits online? Because like most of the. The three piece suits. Catholic. Look, the three piece suits was just an analogy about like how the, the different. Like a Protestant versus well, a Catholic. Well, then I can't. I'm sorry, sorry, Counselor, I can't track anything you're saying because it's all just like fluff and meaningless. Well, I mean, it's not that complicated. The analogous property is just like, you know, sort of like the seriousness and the formality, and that comes down to some. And the analogy that's going to be by dress code, right? Yeah. If if, if we took what you're saying, like seriously. Right. Assuming you weren't just like farming for content right now. Like the, the logical conclusion is that I would fall somewhere in the Protestant right or I'd become like an online ortho bro. I mean like that would be the more likely of outcomes. So yeah, I'd say your theory is a bit flawed there, Rabbit, but um let me know whenever you guys have the next, uh, you know, conclave on the inner psyche of Xerxes. Uh, I'll be happy to stop by. Yeah, that's going to be in about five minutes. Wow. I mean, I get the appeal of Roman Catholicism as far as the attractiveness of you know, social order, cleanliness, style, gold, silver, crimson. Yeah. But I don't think that Xerxes. I think Xerxes is in it for like moral reasons. Well, I mean, you know, would be a great way to know um, his particular reasons if he would just say why. He he told I, me before. He told me. He told oh, other yeah. people. Yeah. What's yeah. the reason? Uh, diabolical evil, and reconciling that diabolical diabolical evil exists in the world. So like there are evil people that are evil because of reasons, right? Maybe they're they feel because they're poor and hungry. But then he cites like people that are just evil with no explanation. Like the you know hateful pink haired you know lesbian girl who Wants to kill all men. Right? Is that an example he are, used? Are you talking about Gabs? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Is that an example he used just out of curiosity? Uh, uh, sort of, if you're listening I'm, to I'm, I'm, vaguely, I'm vaguely remembering it. Uh, are you saying bit. that to your remembrance, that is the example he used? Pink-haired lesbians? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, better evil, now, better now... Evil. Okay, yeah. Right. So when I when I was talking about blue haired lesbians, right? Do you think I was onto something? The wrong color, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it just sounds a little dude, weird. The wrong you know how, color. You know how you hear atheists say, "It's people like you." That's why I'm an atheist. You know. 
Uh, it just is, it sounds really weird the other way around. It's people like atheists that made me a Christian. It's pink lesbians, not blue haired. I don't know, bro. I'm Catholic because I like the statues and icons. I don't, I don't know what else. Yeah. And Xerxes telling me, yeah, he don't, he don't care about that at all. Um, yeah, John, I agree with you, bud. I agree with you, man. Uh, whew. that's, yeah, there's evil in the world. So therefore Catholicism. It was actually like pretty philosophical. Like he went into like different types of evil and how some evil can just be explained through like natural means. But then he says the diabolical evil was the term he used at the time. I don't know if he's updated it, but he said diabolical evil has to be uh, kind of, this is paraphrasing now, but it has to be like uh, propelled by uh, darker forces, like spiritual forces. <laughs> Why? Um, because there's no other option. Oh, okay. could, yeah, because that no, makes sense. Okay. No, ra no rational individual will do evil knowing that it's evil, I guess. When you mentioned these dark evils in the world, I thought you were going to go with like serial killers or something. I wasn't expecting the uh, lesbians and feminists. Well, you weren't expecting pink haired lesbians. Yeah, I actually, two, two serial sinister. killer, what they're doing is good. Do you think Xerxes is just playing a bit, Saturn? I don't want to comment on that because, like, you think I don't he's want just to like doing the ultimate Catholic uh, op. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 